What's up guys, Wu here, back again with another Division 2 video guys. Welcome back, it is Sunday evening and it is Wu the Community episode 16. And if you're new to the channel, you're new to these type of videos, let me explain what these are all about. What happens midweek, I will post a topic, a question, for you guys to give me your own honest opinions. And then what I'll do, I'll push, push it into a video, i.e. today's video, and then we'll discuss these said topics. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, opinions, on today's topic and today's topic very simply is exotics what do you feel needs a buff or a rework or a tweak again many people reach down I'm gonna go for the best ones and of course if you enjoy this video thumbs doodle it helps and guys the channel has reached 2 million views what the actual fuck I'm sorry I had to throw the F word in I had to drop the F bomb simply because it is blew me away this morning I had the notification on YouTube to say 2 million views Guys, you're amazing. Keep being awesome and help me get to 10k. I'm not far away, guys. I'm not far. So, of course, guys, as always, let's move this. So, chaps, first person reached out was Cass. He said this. I'd go for the Merciless. Now, he didn't go into exact details what he wanted changing, but he wants a change to the Merciless. Now, the Merciless, in terms of the talent itself, is something, if I recollect... It's regarding the stacks, isn't it? The seven stacks. So, so when you again, when you fire and you on, on trigger and pull release, both bullets hit the same enemy. Yeah, you gain. Yeah, I think you gain a stack, don't you? And at seven stacks, shooting enemy deals. Is it 500% amplified damage? Yeah, okay. And then it creates an explosion, dealing some more damage. Yeah, I just, I find it quite underwhelming. And when we talk about exotics in general, again. Line in the sand, guys. The line in the sand. Very simply, I do feel they're underwhelming. And the, the merciless itself, if you recollect, used to be a really good holstered weapon because of the explosive damage. And as soon as they changed that, the holster talents and removed them from the game, then it it left, in my opinion, the merciless one of the weakest weapons in the game. I find this very situational, very very situational. And again, for me, it's a stash filler. It's simple as that. It's, I've got one. It's in the stash. And I perhaps won't use it again. And that's highly frustrating, really, because you want to be using these go-to exotics. So what I'd like to see happen on the Merciless, as well as all exotics, is to earn a second talent. Have yourself a second talent. That gives them that extra little bit of competitive edge. Get it back in the swing of things, back in the mix. Would you use more exotics, given they have an extra talent? Given you can only have one per build, one exotic in your gear, and one exotic in your weapon slots it th there needs to be a reason and a powerful reason i want to go through the course of the video i'll talk about my favorite exotic and what i feel is the best in slot for most builds and guys yeah there's a lot which and exotic weapons they're just too situational too gimmicky um and I, I don't want that i want to see some power on the exotics and two talents will elevate each exotic, in my opinion. But Merciless, my, my man, yes, it needs to be changed. It's quite weak and underwhelming at present. Thanks, Cass. Next one is community member and awesome guy, Matt S. I want to love the Bighorn, but it's just not an AR or a rifle the way it is. I've really tried to use it, but always go back to the dependable regular weapons. Damage increase would help. I find the gear exotics are alright for some builds. The cooldowns are too high on the backpack and gloves. Getting overcharged more often would make them more than likely to be needed. I don't have the raid weapons yet to comment on. Thanks, Matt. Legend, cheers, cheers for dropping a comment. Now, the Bighorn, unfortunately, I don't have the Bighorn. I have farmed for this, and this is why I've done a lot of legendary missions the last few weeks. And lo and behold, my exotic RNG is nil poir. It's non-existent. So I'm still farming for the Bighorn. So it's very difficult for me to comment on a weapon that I don't have. Now, the big horn that we do know, again, it's kind of a it's a mishmash of an AR and a rifle. And there's no, for me, no identity in terms of what the weapon is. And again, people say maybe an increased mag size. And that's what I hear a lot, is the increased mag size would help. But still, again, a very situational piece. And given it, there is, again, a, a sheer hard time farming for this weapon... And then when you get the weapon, like most exotics, you earn it and you go, wow, look at this great, awesome exotic weapon. And again, it's like feeling like you've got those socks from grandma on Christmas Day. You open them up and it's a train or it's a football and you go, wow, really? Really? And that's how I feel with most exotics. 
you know, I'm a little bit excited, and when I wrap them and start playing with them, I am so underwhelmed, it's untrue, and I'll just go next. Back in the stash, what am I using next? And that is the situation with 90% of the exotics within the game, and that is a problem, it really is. And as, again, the big horn, I do feel it does need some tweaking, i.e. mag size would help, that's for sure, and a bit of identity, what the hell is it? And of course, guys, yeah, you know, so many people don't have it, I know there are people that are getting one a day. Happy days. I'm not. I'm still farming, but I do feel it needs to be changed. So, Matt, thanks for dropping by, mate. Thanks for offering a comment. Next one, back onto the Bighorn discussion, is Cold Killer Dub K. Is that right, mate? Uh, hopefully that's right. That's how I read it anyway. Bighorn definitely is an increase in mag size, and also I feel that, like the chameleon is too situational. I feel like it shouldn't take so many shots to get the buffs. Maybe like three or four, but nerf the amount of damage you get from the buffs, so it won't be OP. Man, thank you very much for the comment. Now, the one worry I have, and we'll start with the chameleon. The one worry I genuinely have is I feel that the devs are, are scared shitless of putting too much emphasis on increasing damage and buffing certain exotics for the sake of in time nerf them again when they've overdone it and that's what generally happens a lot of again just gear in general weapons in general when they're first launched and there's a pts it's quite evident quite quickly that this is far too powerful foundry being an example it is far far op and for me guys you can see that when you read the stats you re read it on paper it's wrong it's just no you shouldn't release it and they still do I don't know why, but they still do this, which is highly frustrating because you're a developer, you're a coder, you should know, you should know these things. So with a chameleon, it was a very, very poor exotic, one of the worst in the game. What's happened? It had a few patches back, a buff of 32 or 33%. Now, the voice is very, I mean, guys, how do I put this? Right, any weapon to have that kind of buff. Instantly you think, shit, that's going to be fantastic. And you use it, and you still feel not much difference using the chameleon. Still highly situational, still a little bit boring, a little bit underwhelming. Um, yeah, is it go-to? No, I would not recommend it. I do feel, again, it's okay. It's, at best, it's situational, it's not bad, but still, again, as Cold Killer does clearly state, you have to do so much to earn the buffs. 30 leg shots, guys. 30 leg shots. I don't know about you guys. I never aim for anyone's legs. I never have. I know there's been talents in the past when you aim for someone's kneecap and then you get some extra bleed or some bollocks. I really don't know. I think that's just freaking pointless. For me, you go for the head. Or, again, with my potato aim, you go for the chest. You go for the chest. You want to make sure that you're hitting shots. Again, hitting the leg shots, high situational, given the weapons underpowered, underwhelming, and of course, doesn't do enough for me. It really doesn't. That's the same with most exotics in the game. It sure needs another review. And again, let's have a second talent on the weapon. That would make it somewhat usable, that's for sure. But not a really shit talent. Make it quite, quite weird, quite wonderful. And yet, gimmicky, but gimmicky that's good. But yeah, big horn. As you've stated, mate, needs an increased size of mag. Yes, I'm with you on that. What I've seen and what I've heard from most players, it needs that change, that's for sure. Cold Colour, thanks for your comment, buddy. Then we have Spindrift. Hard to choose since pretty much all just take up stash space, excluding the Liberty Sweet Dreams. Before they said exotics had just been used for the holster of talent. Now, since most exotics are underpowered and lack a second talent, stash place holder. Man, thanks for the comment. Let's get this straight. It's There's a recurring theme as you've probably go through this video. And the thing is, exotics are mostly underpowered. Same time, a second talent would elevate an exotic and make it worthwhile. That's for sure. Now, in terms of exotics, you've mentioned two there. Liberty, the good pistol shield build, hits hard. Yes, even after the nerf, it still hits hard. It's a great go-to Liberty. Love that on most shield builds. I think it's, again, one of the best exotics in the game. Then we have the Sweet Dreams. The Sweet Dreams is perhaps one, again, of the best exotics in the game for one reason and one reason alone. 
and you don't have to fire the fucking thing. All you do, all you do is melee, melee NPCs. And that's that's my thing. It's great at what it does. It's excellent. And it's again, when you face when you're facing any NPCs, that's nice to have that as your secondary is the sweet dreams. So ultimately that just leads the primary and your sidearm defunct. Pretty much you can't you use another exotic. Because you've got the sweet dreams, which is fantastic and does an excellent job at what it does, and that's the one shot melee. So I'm a little bit bewildered, really, because I need to see something powerful. And again, even with the sweet dreams, does it need another talent for you to actually fire the weapon? How many people, guys, I'd love to hear this in the comment section, that use the sweet dreams and actually shoot the bloody thing? <laughs> I'd love to hear. And you get that poll or percentage up and going, I guarantee that most people, a huge majority, would not fire the weapon. They'd just skin switch to the sweet dreams, one chip melee, turn back to the AR or SMG or LMG they use and go, happy days. Job's job's good. You know, another another purple bar done, another red bar done. And that's why again it's quite crazy. But it's in the game and it works a treat. So yeah, it's I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, guys. I really, really would. But again, in terms of the stash base and in terms of the exotics, let's get one thing straight. I have quite a few exotics now. I'm still missing a couple here and there, but most of my exotics are in my stash. They're sitting in the stash, not doing much. I use a couple from time to time. Pestilence, for me, is... Do I say it? Yes, do I say it? Yeah. The best exotic in the game love what that does now absolutely adore what it does on a skill build using the pestilence you, you know guys you know it is amazing and once an enemy dies with that debuff it affects another enemy so so much damage over time an absolutely astounding weapon even through the ages i mean when it first came out it was underwhelming i agree they fixed it they've tweaked it and guys it's in such a wonderful place. The Pestilence, in my opinion, is amazing. It really is. I cannot see past the Pestilence. Any status effect built, even though the debuff from Plague of the Outcast is not a status effect, it's like wildfire. It is. It's awesome. Pestilence is amazing. Looking past that, there's a couple of ones that are, are topic of the month, quite flavor of the month, like the Lady Death PvP. It's, yeah, it's so powerful. It's untrue. Going beyond that, there's so many that just don't do what they need to be doing, and that's hitting hard. So, Spindrift, I'm with you, mate. Most of my exotics are in the stash. There's one or two which are there or thereabouts, but I don't really use them other than the Pestilence and other than Sweet Dreams. Finally, Albert Motby. Either the Chatterbox or Tardigrade need a buff for me. Chatterbox needs a range increase, and the Tardigrade needs to feel strong on tank builds than the Vanguard, Vanguard talent. Cheers, cheers, mate. Appreciate your comment. Now, this one, this is an interesting one. Now, with the good old chatterbox, this is a weapon that, again, I'd never really used for a long, long time. And I found it quite situational. It was a holstered weapon. That's only ever, anyone would use it for. Early Doors Division 2, you would use it as your holstered weapon for the extra rate of fire on your SMG. That's for sure. And it would work sensational with any smg build it was crazy was it the wids build am i right but yeah just out of this world was fantastic and once things changed yeah and it weren't really a thing the chatterbox was definitely in well it weren't in pandora's box i tell you that it was more so in a box getting dusty not no one using why so the weapon looks awesome it looks cool aesthetically perfect but using the weapon is again like most weapons in the game highly situational and yeah i've got a god roll one which is is okay at very best i uh, use it with striker and it does some decent numbers if you want to see the build then i'll happily showcase it it is what it is i wish it was better but still it puts in a shift um i do like the talent again the whole rate of fire increased by 20 percent if i recollect for each enemy within is it 15 meters again correct me if i'm wrong um, I do feel it's okay, but again, guys, same as always, I would love to see that extra talent because there are, in my opinion, much better SMGs to use in the game. Dark Winter, 
and named it SMG, which is just shreds. It really does. So I'd use that over Chatterbox, in my opinion. But again, guys, what do you think? Chatterbox, love to hear your thoughts on that because for me, I think it's a 5 out of 6 out of 10. It is a stash. That's it. And it comes out when I, I try out with Striker, but that's about it, guys. It does need some love, that's for sure. Now, finally, the Tardigrade. Now, I do not use Tardigrade on a DPS build. I don't use it on, you guessed it, a tank build. I use Tardigrade on skill builds. And use it on skill builds for, again, a number of reasons. First reason is it's nice to provide that team support. I love support. I love, again, what the utility it offers a team. I'm a team kind of guy, and that's how I play the game. I, I try to build around a team. So if someone's using Overwatch and I've got Overwatch on, then you know, and I know, you need to take it off. And I'll use a different particular chess piece. I always try and check these things out and you see who you're running with and see what how they're running, how they're, again, optimised for the group. Now, in terms of Tardigrade, um, what do I feel needs to happen to that? And for me, on a tank build, I would not use it at all. I just wouldn't use it. I'd, I would use Vanguard every day. Shield, Vanguard, can't look past it. So I don't see the home or the space for the Tardigrade. Or if you're playing solo, you, should, you use Unbreakable. Or Perfect Unbreakable. Happy days. So Tardigrade, for me, it's a great team support piece. However, as always, guys, you know there are much, much better pieces than that. That's how I feel. And again, the 80% of your armor for 10 seconds. It'd be nice if that was buffed. And it'd be nice if the cooldown wasn't 45 seconds, it was 30 seconds. And just say 90% armor for 15 seconds. Wouldn't that be nice? If Again, if it was just buffed a little bit, you know? And of course, yes, guys, I'd like to see an additional talent to make it a bit more viable. That's for sure. But the Tardigrade, yes, I, I do like it. I think it's situational, but again, only for support builds in PvE. That is about it. I'd use it occasionally PvP, occasionally for support play, but that is about it, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section on the Tardigrade because, again, I, it, for me, it's a 6, 6.5, maybe a 7 and a push, maybe, but, again, there's so many different options I'd look at first, in my opinion, but it is an okay exotic. I'd just love to see how it gets some more love, in my opinion, yet again, guys. So I'm going to wrap up there. I know there's loads of comments this week, and I appreciate them all. But again, I don't want to do an hour-long video. You guys wouldn't tune in, that's for sure. So guys, let me know your feedback in the comment section. What do you feel needs a buff, exotic-wise? Love to hear your thoughts. What do you feel needs a nerf? And again, I guarantee some will say Lady Death, and I don't disagree. So guys, let me know what you think below. And of course, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.